Now, there are some similarities in the U.S. version of working papers. However, the tax codes are a little more comprehensive. So let's take a look at it from the beginning using the U.S. version of working papers. So here I am in the U.S. version. And again, I want to go to Engagement Properties, select the appropriate jurisdiction, and then, oops, this time I want USA, and then I choose the tax entity. Now, working papers support C Corp, S Corp, nonprofit partnership tax export codes. And in order to populate the columns available in the mapping database in a template, it's necessary to first select each tax entity once so the tax code database will be populated with all four tax entity codes. So I choose C Corp and say yes. It's going to copy the appropriate tax codes in. S Corp, same thing. Partnership, say yes. And nonprofit and say yes. Now I'm doing this because I want all those codes available for my mapping database in my template so that when I create a new file from the template they will be already set up and ready to be assigned. Once completed you see me switch back to C Corp. I'm going to use that as my US tax entity today. Finally we can select the tax software we're using and it's worth noting that if you change your tax software all you need to do on working papers is change your selection here. The export process builds the appropriate export table for the software selection you've made. And we have the popular tax products available to you right here. I'm going to choose Go System Tax as my example and click OK. If the accounts had been previously mapped and the tax code set up in the mapping database, changing the tax entity selection prompts the user to autofill the tax codes. Again, this will only happen if the accounts are mapped and the mapping database has the tax codes assigned to the map numbers. So I'm going to click OK or Yes to move past this for now. Also, in the U.S. version of working papers, there are multiple columns for assignment of tax codes and M3 codes to the map number. Going back to engagement mapping to look at the mapping database and scrolling to the right, you can see that not only do I have a tax export code and M3 code column, but I also have the tax export code columns for the C Corp, the S Corp, partnership and nonprofit, and I also have, continuing over, columns available for the M3 for the C Corp, S Corp and partnership. Now, if those are all populated properly and I change the file from C Corp to an S Corp, the tax export code column and the M3 code column will be updated with the properties of, in this example, the S Corp. Now, mine are blank, and I'm just going to stick with my C Corp, but we would go through and populate it in this fashion. Now, tax export codes and M3 codes can be assigned to map numbers in the mapping database by using the drop down selector in the respective columns. So if I click the drop down. Here I've got the tax code list dialog which allows the user to select the tax code by choosing the tax code that we want and hitting select. We can sort by any one of the column headings. We can create a new tax code but to do that we must have an asterisk available in the detail column. So there is one here. If I click on new that's going to give me a tax code field that I can then populate. So I was on 01A and then I can add point zero one through 0.72, as well as the description. That will populate a supporting schedule in the tax software for the particular line item that you're dealing with. Now I'm going to cancel that without actually creating one. We do have the ability to modify and delete tax codes. We can only delete the tax codes that we've created and uh, the modifications available to us if we need to change the description for any purpose. Now I'm going to cancel out of this. Based on the entity type and the tax export code, the tax export code and M3 code columns are populated by the code set up in the specific tax entity type columns according to the tax entity selected in engagement properties, which I've mentioned already. When map numbers are assigned to the accounts, the accounts stick on all properties including any codes listed in the tax export code and M3 code columns. If you're not using the mapping functionality of case we're working papers, you can still use the assign dialog, again under account. We now have assigned tax export codes and assigned M3 codes. If I open one of those up, we get the accounts on the left and the tax codes on the right where we can drag and drop, very similar to the assigned mapping dialog. I'll just cancel out of this right now. And finally, tax export codes and M3 codes can also be assigned directly in the working trial balance. So going into the trial balance document, we can scroll across here and we can see the tax export code column and the M3 code column and we can just select the drop down to assign them. The 
easiest way, of course, to assign the tax codes, same as in the Canadian version, is by assigning the MAP number. Then all the other properties will also get assigned. So I'm going to expedite the assignment of the tax export and M3 codes by using the auto map feature once again, found under Tools, Options, Mapping Autofill, and click the auto map. In the background, we see everything gets populated, and I'll click OK. Okay, so we're working papers assigns the map numbers and related properties to the account numbers. And in this case, again, the auto map required that the ratio class had been applied previously to the accounts to allow for auto mapping to recognize the properties to assign. Again, normally I would take the time to validate the auto map, but here I'm going to assume that all accounts were properly mapped.